Can you hear me now? Yes, now I can hear you. Okay, let's begin. Yeah, hello. Um, um, what's your opinion about the conflict between Palestine and Israel? So, let me put it this way. The United States endlessly gives billions of dollars to Israel and America receives nothing in return. And Israel has stabbed us in the back numerous times, like look up USS Liberty. And I don't think we should be giving our money to Israel. And I think that Israel has a deep, like the Israeli lobby has deeply penetrated American politics. And the Israeli lobby should not be allowed to operate. Like people talk about like Russian infiltration in the U.S., but like Israel, like everything they accuse Russia of doing, Israel actually does to us, and you're not allowed to call it out. And as far as like the Palestinians themselves are concerned, like I support Palestinian rights to self determination, and I support Palestinian statehood. So that's my opinion on that matter. So, uh, Alex, um, how do you think this conflict? conflict can be resolved peacefully let me let me put it like this the only way it can be resolved is if so look at the fall of apartheid in south africa the way apartheid ended was that every major country the soviet union china the us they all sanctioned apartheid south africa into giving political rights for the majority of black South Africans, right? So in a similar way, I think Russia, the United States, China, like basically the whole world should like say, we're going to impose sanctions until you give political rights and self-determination to the Palestinians living in Gaza and the West Bank. And even if it comes in the form of a two-state solution, which like both Russia and China diplomatically support, so far, like at this point, I would argue the United States and its foreign policy is actually more of a burden to peace than Israel itself is in this conflict. Because there have been Israeli prime ministers who have said, like in the past, obviously Netanyahu today isn't for a two-state solution, but there were Israeli prime ministers in the past who were for one, and they've been assassinated by these Kahanists and, and pro-US-backed far-right people like the JDL and stuff. And my point is that the United States is a bigger barrier to peace than even Israel itself is. We're the ones pushing Israel to continue its occupation. And we're the ones pushing Israel to continue acting out against its Arab neighbors. And remember, we want we want Israel to be isolated from its Arab neighbors, which is why we push them to continue the genocide in Gaza, which it is a genocide. And there's no other way of putting it. Now, uh, the only way we can solve this is if the whole world comes together, puts sanctions on Israel, and says either stop or we're going to continue sanctioning you economically and politically, just like with apartheid South Africa. And it has to be the whole world. It has to be Russia. It has to be China. It has to be, has to be Latin America, which Latin America is already taking. Like all these Latin American countries, like Brazil and Bolivia, are already starting to take steps towards that. The whole world needs to do it, and. I know there are factions in Russia, because I know you're from Russia. I know there are factions in Russia that are more supportive of Israel. But that's but those same factions are people who those same factions in Russia are people who got rich off of the back of the Russian people in the nineteen nineties during the Yeltsin period. And these are people who want to remain friendly with the West. Remember, these are the same people who are the fifth column in Russia's own special military operation against the Ukrainian state. Um, the world is now um, on the threshold of new wars. Uh, what do you think world governments should do to avoid a global world war three, which is possible because of these wars? I think the United States is the only like like with Israel. I think in the case of Russia, Ukraine, and with Taiwan, none of these things would be an issue if the United States wasn't pushing. It's not like China. Ha or Russia has bases near our borders. 
They don't even have the ability to do that. So all the United States has to do is allow Ukraine to negotiate with Russia. All the United States has to do is not push Taiwan towards war with China. All the United States has to do is not give billions to Israel and not prop up people like Netanyahu. All the United States has to do is not fund color revolutions like the Euromaidan in Ukraine. It's all the United States. It really is in all these conflicts. Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan, it's all the same. We're, we're sanctioning Cuba. We're sanctioning Venezuela. It's all the same. All these, con- like 95%. And yeah, are there conflicts? Yeah, would there be an Israeli-Palestinian animosity without the U.S.? Sure. But the U.S. plays a very big role in escalating te- tensions. And with the Ukraine conflict, I don't even think there would be a Ukraine conflict if the United States weren't involved to some degree. Do you think that people from different countries should unite outside governments to stand up for common rights and values? Of course. But it depends on what those common rights and values are. I think I, I, I believe in socialism. So I believe that the working class, regardless of country, should stand up against their governments and stand up against imperialism, especially U.S. imperialism for the working class and for the global oppressed and majority. And I'm going to put it like this. Often liberals and liberals, liberal internationalism uses similar sort of arguments to justify color revolutions, to justify like taking away self-determination of countries. Like I'm an internationalist. One second. One second. Yeah, I'm an internationalist, but I still believe in self-determination for all countries. And I still believe that, like, cultural policy, like, for example, not all Arab countries are going to accept LGBT rights. And to be honest, that's not my business as an American. However, there are certain rights that countries should respect, like the rights of the working class, the right of... The, the gen- generally the right to have beliefs in the right to have uh acting how would I put it like this I'm sorry I'm just tired I'm outside yeah let me rephrase it people should stand up for the right to religion for the right to for the rights to the working class for the right to organize politically without political repression the or the right for political prisoners, like in the United States, we have plenty of plenty of political prisoners, like Julian Assange, like Mumia Abu Jamal, Leonard Peltier, and there's hundreds and thousands, there's hundreds if not thousands of others. And the point is, is that we have to stand up for political prisoners in the U.S. and in the West. We have to stand up for the working class of all countries, and that's yeah, that's my view.